Thank you very much, great minds. I'm told that people in the house are great minds. Your, your excellencies, honored guests, um, thank you very much for taking time to be with us in this evening amongst many other I mean, competing commitments that you have. For us, this evening is a sense, is about shaping the future of our country and that of our continent. It is about answering hard but unavoidable questions about the future of our children and generations to come. Other countries around the globe are, gra are grappling with this question and are looking for solutions. We need to do the same, not just so that we are not left behind, but create a generation of pioneers in finding solutions to the difficulties our continent is facing, whether be it the use of technology in solving the food security challenges, proper management of our natural resources, ad advancing knowledge and creative industries, dealing properly with the future of work, and resolving the burden of diseases. This event tonight is largely driven by heavy chefs, which now I know they are not a cooking company, <laughs> and um, the Tabombeki Foundation Youth Hub, whose philosophy is to provide intersection between thought leadership and practical implementation of ideas to advance Africa's renaissance. As Fred has said earlier on, in this month last year, the Youth Hub and Heavy Chef convened a seminar to have an in-depth discussion on the impact of, the, of digitization in education and in the future of work. At the end of exhaustive discussions led by Songoba, uh, Maseko, and Sam Pedock. All of us, we were left yearning for more, with even more questions than answers. But as <coughs> I was saying earlier, we were clapping after their uh, presentation, and the um, president asked me, did you understand <coughs> when you were clapping? So, so because me, I didn't. <coughs> Uh, because it looked like the debate was much more above our heads. So, so, so in the end, when they says, what do you think, President, about what we have just said? He says, no. Me, I am the chancellor of UNISA. And UNISA produces 60% of teachers in this country. And none of these teachers are trained in the manner that Sam Pedock and Songoba were talking about. And if we don't do that, it's a structural way of leaving a generation behind. So we needed to answer then the question, how do we resolve this issue of the 21st century education? And ask those that were in the house to start working on a working paper, <clears throat> which working paper in the end will be made available to universities, to government, to multinational bodies at home and in the rest of the continent. But secondly, it, it was made clear that the team must demystify the whole idea of fourth industrial revolution in a manner that its nature and impact is easily understandable to an average African in urban and in rural areas. And more importantly, how does this issue of digitization and <coughs> futures of technology solve our daily pressing problems. So the team really accepted that challenge and constituted a group which Luca Nyonier was leading from a cross section of our population being academics, business, NGO, ICT practitioners and other interested uh, parties. The working group has now produced the working paper which it seeks to unveil tonight and we shall use the working paper as a guide until we have a very clear and practical blueprint on this issue of the future education in our continent. This is absolutely necessary from our point of view because for the longest of times, we as Africans have been consumers of prepackaged knowledge from elsewhere. Time must surely come that we start thinking seriously about the mantra made in Africa. So we are here today to share this initial work with you with a view to engage all of us practically to answer the question, 
what should be the nature and character of education in Africa in the 21st century and beyond. But we also thought it's important that as we think about this matter, we also engage practically in terms of how can we start uh, pursuing this project in a manner that is beneficial. Almost two years ago, President Mbeki attended a seminar organized by IE University in Madrid, Spain. The discussion there was no different from what we are talking about because it was dealing with the future of higher education. So it was whilst we were in Madrid that we visited Kaisha Bank, neither Anton to borrow money nor to deposit, <coughs> but as always to raise problems <coughs> um, and, and, and see how can we get um, these capitalists from somewhere to assist this continent to achieve its objectives. We were quite excited to understand that Kaisha Bank has a partner called Telefonica. And both of them have a social program on education and technology in particular. But we got there at the right time that they had just made a sizable profit. And, and but, but we just realized one thing about the Spaniards, that they are very different brand of capitalism, of capitalists. Because having made this profit, they still consult the Pope. <laughs> so, so they had consulted the Pope as to where do you think we can make an intervention with some of the profits that we have made? So after a long preaching and lecture from the Pope, in the end, the Pope, whatever you do, ensure that the African child is not left behind as far as education and technology is concerned. And they sought to look for a partner in Africa to be able to achieve exactly this common objective which I think all of us need to achieve. And that's when we met with them and say, let's journey together in seeking this solution to advance this African child. So we spent the past nine years, I mean nine months, making preparations um, for this type of an intervention. We visited almost 70 schools around the country and consulted with the Department of Education. Department of Education guided us to the worst performing regions in the country and said this is where the biggest challenge is, and this is where we need to start. And in the end, Sophia will explain the nature of the project. But so far, we have put together 50 schools to reach about 18,000 kids who will be provided with iPads and interactive modes to be able to start this method of teaching. So. But in the end, our objective is to reach a million kids um, from, from South Africa, God willing. They are busy participating in other parts of the continent, um, but in South Africa, this project will be driven by Profituro and the Tabombeke Foundations. So we have started with the schools in the Eastern Cape and Bumalanga. Both representatives are here with us to walk with us through this journey. And just to indicate the levels of commitment uh, from our partners, Sophia and the team that were supposed to be here got stuck in Doha yesterday. And they spent 11 hours in the airport whilst we were trying to solve um, their um, <coughs> passport and visa problems. But due to that level of commitment, they have made sure that they are here with us today to journey with us in solving these problems. In conclusion, many of us and myself standing here, I'm totally convinced that there's absolutely no shortage of negative stories about our country and our continent. But we either have a choice to join this and even contemplate suicide, or rather say we shall use our own privileged status and position to make the greatest investment that Africa needs. That is the investment 
in its children so that they will also be totally free from all of the negativity that has been bestowed by us by slavery and colonialism and be part of a generation that will be in the cutting edge in finding solution to this continent's intractable problems. That journey starts now, and all of you are invited to journey with us, and I thank you very much, and have a good evening. Thank you.